This video will demonstrate using the Linbit SDS GUI to configure and manage a new LinStore cluster. Towards the end of this video, we will perform the same steps using the command line to show how both interfaces can be used for cluster administration tasks. Before we begin, note that you'll need the LinStore GUI package installed on your LinStore controller node. If needed, you can check out our Linbit SDS Quick Start Guide to easily deploy your own LinStore cluster. So let's get started. To access the GUI, use the LinStore controller's IP address on port 3370. When logging in for the first time, the username as well as the password are both set to admin by default. Now after logging in for the first time, our dashboard is blank. We do not have anything defined in our LinStore cluster. To initialize our cluster, we'll need to start by adding each node as a member. So we'll start by adding the LinStore controller node. And we need to make sure we select type controller. And it's also using the same IP address we're using to access the GUI. Now that we've added the controller node, we need to add the three satellite nodes that contain the backing storage. We will speed the video up here a little bit while we add the three satellite nodes to the cluster. Now that we've added all of the nodes in the cluster, we can move on to defining the storage. In order to utilize the physical storage on the systems, we're going to create a storage pool definition that's built on top of an LVM thin pool on each satellite node. In the list view, you can see that we defined an SP0 storage pool on one of the satellite nodes using the LVM thin provider. The disk is actually a volume group and a logical volume thin pool. We'll speed this video up once again while we add the storage pool to the remaining nodes. Now our storage pool has been added to all of our satellite nodes. Note that the IP addresses section will show the default IP addresses used for each node in the cluster. It will also show any additional IP addresses if they have been configured. We can see that we only have the default resource group defined, no resource definitions, and no corresponding resources, nor any volumes. We're going to demonstrate deploying resources through the resource group. Now, what this will do is it will create a resource definition that inherits properties from the resource group, and then when that resource definition is instantiated, it will actually create the resource on different nodes within the cluster. Here we can see the resource definition that was just deployed through the resource group. And then each resource is gonna have at least one volume that's associated with it for replication. Now, since we're using a thin pool at the storage layer, we could take advantage of snapshots in the cluster. To create a snapshot of a resource, navigate to that resources menu and select snapshot. Simply give it a name and any created snapshots will show up in the snapshot section. The error report section will show any errors in the cluster. The settings page has some additional configuration options for the GUI and the users page can be used to control who has access to the GUI. Up to this point, we've exclusively used the GUI to initialize our LinStore cluster, configure our storage, and deploy a replicated resource into the cluster. For this next part, we're gonna switch over to the command line interface and perform the same exact administration tasks through the command line. So let's do it all over again and add our nodes to our cluster. By running LinStore node list, we can see we have an empty cluster. First, we'll add the LinStore controller node. And this is using the LinStore node create command. And notice we set the node type to controller. And now we'll need to add the satellite nodes. And we'll set the node type to satellite. When adding satellite nodes, a lot of information gets printed to the screen regarding what types of storage configurations the satellite nodes can currently support. 
And if we rerun the linstore node list command, we'll see that we've added all four nodes to the cluster. Moving over to the satellite nodes, before we can configure a storage pool, we need to set up the volume group and the thin pool on all three satellite nodes. With the backing storage now configured, we can move over to the controller node once again and use the linstore storage dash pool create command and add our SP0 storage pool to each satellite node. And notice we're specifying an LVM thin storage pool type, and we're referencing the volume group and thin pool that we created earlier. By running linstore storage dash pool list, we can see we've defined the SP0 storage pool on all three satellite nodes. With our storage pool defined, we can now use the default resource group to deploy resources in the cluster. Now in the GUI, the term deploy is used, but on the command line, we make a call to spawn resources. We're targeting the default resource group. We're calling our resource definition vm-disk-001, and we're specifying a one gigabyte volume size. Running linstore resource-definition list, we can see our resource definition. Running the linstore resource list command, we can see the resources deployed to the cluster. Running the linstore volume list command, we can see the associated volumes. Note there's only 315 kilobytes allocated because we're using thinly provisioned volumes for replication. Lastly, we'll explore using snapshots in our cluster. The linstore snapshot list command lets us view any snapshots that exist in our cluster. We can create a snapshot using the linstore snapshot create command, specifying our resource and the snapshot name. Coming back to the GUI, we can see that we have a populated linstore cluster with nodes and resources and volumes. Looking through the inventory, all four nodes have been added. Our SP0 storage pool is listed. In the storage configuration, the default resource group is there. Our resource definition that we created is there. The resources are spawned, and the volumes associated with those resources exist. And our snapshot is also listed. The goal of this video is to demonstrate using the Linbit SDS GUI to completely initialize and configure a Linstore cluster. As a bonus, we walk you through how to perform the same exact steps using the command line. Ultimately demonstrating, you can use the GUI and the command line interchangeably for Linstore cluster administration. It's important to mention the Linbit SDS GUI is only available as an add-on for our customers. If you're interested in enterprise support for your Linstore cluster, come visit our website and don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're always happy to discuss any storage needs you may have. Check the video description for links. And as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.